today we are at Wildlife Encounters Taxidermy. And I'm getting my first look at, at Jill's deer from last fall. And Mackenzie's going to be doing the work today, starting them out. We're super excited. Turn the ears, turn the eyes, turn the nose, turn the lips, salt it. After it's salted, we either send it out to a tannery or now I've taken over all the tanning. Besides like dry tan wall hangers like coyotes because I haven't learned how to flip them well enough to make them soft enough yet. I do do like flat hide now dry tan. I have one in my car actually. Um, but then they go and pickle, get tanned, come back to us. We have to prep the skin again, turn the ears, take the cartilage out. Prep the ear liners, make sure they fit. Sometimes you gotta cut them, sometimes they're smaller. Make sure they fit. Then you rough them up like this because they're just plastic kind of like material, but these ones are pink, these ones are really nice ones. Um, you know, scratch them up all like that. And then you basically use this stuff. I don't know where it is, I'm gonna have to grab it. Uh, it's Magic Smooth it's called. It's like two part epoxy, but it's not. It's like a special kind. But it's really firm and holds the skin straight onto this ear. And then once those are in, I take those antlers off. I take this. I already did some of your face. See how it's sanded here? It's not smooth. But I'll take this, because I already tested it, it made sure it fits. And I'll just... Over the entire thing. And then I put hide priest from right about here to right around this area so it's covering just a little bit of the brisket. And then you'll see me, I will sculpt the eyes and um, let it dry a couple seconds, minutes, whatever, take a break. Hide paste the face, put the face on, put clay in the ears, Put clay over the rest of the head so it's nice and even because usually that's Bondo, but I didn't do the whole thing. Um, make sure all the skin is where it goes. The ears are in here, so the tear duct and the eye should kind of go right here, which should make the nose go in the proper place. And then these are Y incisions. I'll kind of show you quick. Well, there is so much more involved than I realized. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. So, after I do all the hide paste and all that, right. I'll put this on. I kind of got to do it funny now because the ears aren't on. But there's little points in the lion scissor. And those will meet up perfectly. Wow. And you know, the skin will be on. Okay, yeah. So then I put, oh, I lost that. Two stitches here and here. So these two pieces of skin meet and they're tight around the antler bur after I put some magic smooth around the antler bur so they stay nice and firm and tight. And then after those are stitched, then I go to the face, okay, this needs to be moved a little bit here, this needs to, you know, go a little bit back, okay, the nose needs to be, you know, be adjusted down here. You'll see that when I actually put the hide paste on and stuff, but then after that, then I go back to these antler burrs, so this side, so that side, one string is short, just so the first side. Second string is really long, so we'll sew this side and all the way down the neck. Wow. And then after that is all done, I'll make sure all this is nice and smooth, tight the mannequin, smooth it all down, the brisket's in the right place, the withers and the legs are in the right place, this is all nice and smooth. And then I pretty much just put like high paste on the back of this slightly, make sure that skin is real, you know, tight to the back of this, and I cut it short enough so it's not covering the whole thing, but it's like, mm half an inch long. That's all nice and tight. I do staple around from like right about here on both sides, down the brisket and everything, make sure that's really secure. But the rest of it doesn't get staples. Just amazing. But see if you can see this part, kind of. So see how there's kind of three sections to this. I'm trying to spread it out for you. This right here, yeah. your brisket line, brisket, legs. Yeah. So you gotta make sure those are all in the right place yeah. so it looks good. Yeah. If you look on those guys over there, brisket from the center, the legs are on sides. 
So this guy I made for my mom for Mother's Day, three days before my accident. And I never got the chance to paint it. And I was gonna go to a taxidermy show. I ended up going to the hospital and Jim's like, I don't wanna finish it because she wanted to do it for a competition, but he didn't really wanna show my parents at first. And he's like, you know, if worst comes to worst and she does pass, I want you to know that she made this for you for Mother's Day. And my mother and my father saw the picture and just started bawling their eyes out. Mm. They're like, she spent her final days working her butt off to make me something for Mother's Day on her time, on any of her downtime, at the end of work. Right. You know, I'd go in on the weekends. I'd work till 10, 12 o'clock at night. Mom's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I just, I just was motivated to work from gym. <laughs> That's beautiful, really nice. Yeah. I'm this sure they loved it. This guy was roadkill. Yeah. And she was actually a nuisance deer. My friend has a very large farm. Wow. So they get nuisance tags yep. because they destroy their crops. Yep. They don't kill a lot of them. They try to keep as many as they can alive. But, you know, they'll kill a couple of them that are just ruining their crops. Yep. So I got her. So she's a nice short hair, how she would be when she would have a lawn. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if a, if a deer's ear was ripped real bad, like from fighting, would you have to change that form a little bit? Like make a, a cut on the Um, form? It depends. So that doe over there, if you look on her left ear, mm -hmm. it's completely cut. So that one I have to cut the ear liner. But usually if it's just like a normal cut, then we can glue it back together if the skin and hair is still there. Yep. But that one was obviously completely gone. Immediately, as soon as I put this paste on, I will insert it into the ear. Wow. So what and then quick? it dries, like, the skin into the, like, onto this. Yeah. So you don't want it to be completely dry when you're yeah. inserting it. You want it to be nice and wet and fresh. And that's also why I didn't do the ears yesterday, because if I would have taken this and it would have slid down past here, then tomorrow I wouldn't be able to take clay, shove yeah. it underneath the ear, and on to here to make that smooth. Okay. So you gotta do it the day of. Right. Well, it's, you should. Right. Then I opened up that ear, use my fingers, push that in, and I take this, find the tip of the ear, put the tip of the ear on, and I look for hair patterns, so, when I get this one, I'll kind of show you. Lots and lots of moving around stuff. And I take this, and I flip it with my hand. Oh, wait a minute. See how this is like yeah. all skin? And it's just kind of... Yeah. So I take it with my hands, flip that skin. And see how this is all wrinkly? Yeah. Now I gotta smooth all that out. Wow. Always do the inside of the ear first. See where this is split? Oh yeah. I'm just gonna smush it back together yeah. very slowly. Hmm. Now I'm gonna take my hand, pull all this hair out of there. Well, as much as I can. Take my finger, get that glue out of there. Patterns are lined up. Then you go down the back. Make sure this is all smooth. Pull it down if you need to.
now that ear is ready. That's amazing. called hide paste. It's essentially glue for taxidermy. Mm. So it glues your skin to this mannequin or form which is made of foam. That's why deer mounts are so light. Unless they have, you know, some ridiculous rack or a habitat or something on them. Find wine season, put your hand through there. Try and get some of the hair back. Nice long wine season, more sewing, but a lot easier to get it on. as eye level mm. as you can. Draw out the lip line, make a little circle in the back for the rest of the lip. Draw out this side, draw out this side, and we put a septum in the middle. So every form you have to do that with. Um, this is not the same form, but same idea. They come like this, see how their nose is full? Yeah. So you have to drill all that out, drill this lip line out, drill this tear duct out. Wow. It has to be done on every single form. Okay. See how there's this kind of gap here where there's like missing. Yes. So you take another piece. Should have been a little thinner than this, but that's okay. Squish it in there. And your little gap. Don't gotta be perfect. Chop it. Just filling in. The gap there. And you take your hand. Kind of gently. Just 
just gently clean it up. Mm. Then you're ready to actually put your eye on it. Painter, seamstress, artist, sculptor. Many things we do that people do not realize. And you're ready to go. So right now what I'm doing is called taxiing, I'm moving the skin. That's why we're called taxidermist. So our job is to move the skin, I mean sculpt and everything too, but to move the skin to make it look like a live animal, which is taxiing, so we're taxidermists.
Mackenzie, it's starting to look like something. It's starting to look like a deer. It's getting there, right? Definitely. I got left is to sew and adjust everything so it looks good before it dries. Very nice, Mackenzie. Thank you. And I appreciate you letting me be a part of it today. Of course, anytime you want. Don't yep. bother us none. I learned a lot. And if you're in the way, I'll just tell you to move. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Mackenzie. Big day. I'm looking forward to this. still see what we need to see, I guess, huh? Still visible. That makes it, that makes it Man, that turned out beautiful. Job, Mackenzie, thank you. Yes. No problem. Anytime, I was happy to do them. Ah, oh, special. Well, I says to him, and when I finished him, I says, "You better tell me when you come to pick it up, because I want to be there." Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. 